Looks like we are getting some activity there at City Hall. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner walking up to the podium along with Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. Let's listen in. Let me say good afternoon, good afternoon. Um, and I'm standing with uh, uh, County Judge Lena Hidalgo, uh, Dr. Shaw, who's also from the county, uh, Dr. Purse, uh, the city of Houston chief medical officer, um, Chief Pena, Chief Acevedo, a number of department heads, Susan Christian over special events, um, and then a number of our city council members, Vice Mayor Pro Tem, Martha Castec Tatum, Councilman Robert Gallegos, Councilman Tiffany Thomas, Councilman Mabie Pack, Councilman Abby, Abby Kamen, Councilman David Robinson, and Councilmember Carolyn uh, Evans Shabazz. Uh, and then I, I think I mentioned Joel Colley uh, from the Houston Livestock Show and, and ro Rodeo, a representative from Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, uh, and other uh, persons. Um, let me just say the reason why we are here today is, of course, is the coronavirus uh, and to kind of bring people up to date as to where we are as of today. Um, and up until yesterday, um, all of the cases that have been confirmed in, the, um, in Fort Bend, Harris County, City of Houston, uh, all of those cases had been uh, related to international travel. Uh, and all of them, with the exception of one that traveled to Italy and came back, uh, were uh, directly tied to that Egyptian cruise line. Uh, and that was up until yesterday. And then, of course, on yesterday, uh, we had the case that was confirmed in uh, Montgomery County uh, that was not tied to international travel uh, and appeared to to be uh, a situation that was uh, took place within our region. And when I say Montgomery County, I count that within our region, Fort Bend, Harris County, Houston. Uh, and that changed things. Uh, and as a result of that, we said that we would uh, monitor this situation very, very carefully, and that we would make the necessary adjustments as we went along to make sure that we were doing everything that we needed to do uh, to keep people safe uh, uh, based upon the facts, the science, and the medical advice that we were being given. And so yesterday changed things. Uh, because yesterday, with the case in uh, Montgomery County, uh, that was evidence of some community spread. And as a result, that takes us to uh, what do we do next? Uh, I will tell you uh, uh, by the end of today, uh, I will be signing uh, an emergency health declaration uh, for the city of Houston. Um, and I'll also uh, Judge, Judge uh, Hidalgo can speak to what the county will be doing, but we, we're both on the same page. Uh, and so at the end of the day, uh, I will be signing an emergency health declaration. Um, and which will remain in place for seven days as we continue to assess uh, the situation. And then depending on where we are at the end of that seven days, uh, then city council will have to uh, vote to continue uh, that emergency health declaration. But that will take effect as of the end of the day today. What does that mean? That means as it relates, for example, uh, to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, uh, that we um, deeply love, deeply love and support, um, they are impacted uh, and directly impacted uh, by, the, by the decision and the changing of events. Um, and I will tell you, it's not an easy that, was, that has uh, um, come too easily, uh, but after conferring and, and talking with the stakeholders, uh, and I have the, we all have the utmost respect and love for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Uh, we are all in agreement. Uh, it is a decision that uh, is being made in the best interest 
of the health and safety of people within within our region. Um, and so as of today, uh, starting tonight, the concerts will, will come to an end as they will phase down. Um, and it will also impact the remaining uh, um, uh, concerts and events at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Um, and let me just add, um, that is not the only event that will be impacted. As you all know, this coming week uh, is the Tour de Houston. And um, the Tour de Houston will also be uh, uh, rescheduled. Um, and if we cannot reschedule it, it will be canceled for this year. And uh, Susan Christian of a special event, and I know their teams, um, have been working very, very hard. Uh, but um, that event will also be either rescheduled or canceled. And for the event uh, in the month of March, uh, as it relates to the city of Houston, uh, those events that are produced, co-sponsored, and permitted, those events uh, will be impacted as well for the duration for the month of March. And so uh, that would include, for example, our capital improvement program town hall meetings as of tonight. Uh, scheduled for tonight, scheduled for tomorrow. Those meetings will be rescheduled for the months of April and May. Uh, and so all of the events for us uh, that our city uh, produced, co-sponsored, and permitted for the month of March uh, are going to be either rescheduled or canceled. Uh, and let me tell you why. Uh, again, change in circumstances. And I've said from the very, very beginning that when we are confronted with the facts, uh, with medical advice, counseling, the science, that we would not hesitate to act. Uh, and, and I will tell you, for those of us who are, uh, who are Texans, through, Texans through and through, and from our area, from our region, you know just how much and how much we love uh, in the Houston Last Actual Rodeo. So you no, that's, this decision has not um, come easily, uh, but the health and safety of the people in, in our region is paramount. And it is important for people to know uh, that based upon the facts presented, we'll make the necessary decisions uh, to keep everyone safe. Uh, and that's what we, that's what we will do. Um, and so we will we'll carefully monitor this situation. And I am saying for the month of March, for the city of Houston, and then the county and judge and I are going to huddle a little bit later on today, and uh, and we will sit down and and coordinate uh, um, responses and uh, steps that we need to take as as we as we move forward. I want to thank the county judge uh, for her collaboration and the partnership. Uh, the county has just been an incredible partner, and I want I want her to know, and I want to say it publicly, appreciate the support and the leadership uh, that she has provided along with her entire team. And with respect to my team, Dr. Purs, um, Stevens uh, Williams, and his, Dr. McNeese, the entire health department, I certainly want to thank them. Uh, but I do want to uh, really appreciate uh, Joe Colley and the entire Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo team uh, for, their, for their support and, uh, and their cooperation. Now let me, let me pause and let me bring up uh, Dr. Purse, and then followed by uh, County Judge Lena Hidalgo. Dr. Purse. Thank you, Judge, and thank you, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Judge, for being here. I just want to remind everyone why we're doing this. This virus is new to the human population. None of us have any immunity to it. We don't know how wide it's going to spread. We're watching around the globe, and we're seeing many communities many nations coming up with many, many cases, and the spread is occurring very rapidly. Within that spread of the people who get ill, we do know that about 80% of those folks have minimal or mild symptoms. To some degree, that's a bit of a problem because those folks are probably the ones who are spreading it throughout the rest of the community. There is a subset of the population, about 15% of the population, who requires hospitalization. There's another percent of the population who's retiring intensive care level care, and they're on uh, in critical condition, and we're seeing it wavers, the number wavers, but we're seeing about a 2% death rate from this. So uh, the death rate appears to be predominantly in people over the age of 50. That seems to be the highest percentage. 
But depending on which decade of life, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80 or above, it's, you know, 5, 8, 10, as much as 15 percent. We're doing this in order to save lives. This is a very big step that the mayor and the judge are taking, but it is to save lives. If we are successful with not only the things that this community can do, what government can do, but what you can do in terms of social distancing, washing your hands, covering your cough, not going to work when ill, those things, when we do those together, we can slow down the spread of the virus through our community. And it's important that everyone understand that that is what did not happen in Wuhan. It exploded in Wuhan. They didn't know it was coming. They had no warning. They had no time to prepare. They had no ability to slow it down. And it completely overwhelmed the community and, importantly, their health care system to the point when people needed a hospital bed, there was none available. What we are trying to do with these very aggressive and, yes, painful decisions is to slow down the virus because we have every reason to expect that at this point, hopefully I'm wrong, but we have every reason to expect that it can spread to many, many people in our community. With 80 percent of the folks having minimal or mild illness, if that open, happens over a long period of time, we'll be able to handle that. But for those percent of folks who need a hospital bed, there needs to be a hospital bed available to them. So if everybody gets sick at the same time, we won't have a hospital bed available. And afterwards, we have a graph over here to the right, a chart that you can look at. We can talk about it later that kind of uh, shows that in a graphic form. But I want to remind everyone that everybody up here understands how difficult these decisions are, how painful it's going to be to some folks. But we're doing it in order to save lives, real lives of real people. And if we are successful, we will look back on this and say, well, you know what? It turned out not to be such a bad deal. Well, if that's the case, and we're seeing what's happening in Italy, for example, then that will be because of all of these things that we have done. It won't be because those things were unnecessary. It will be because of the steps that we're taking, like the steps we're taking today. And the option is to not do these things, in which case we would certainly expect to have a Wuhan situation. That is not acceptable. So as painful as these things are, I want to remind everybody, we're doing this in order to save lives. Thank you. County Judge. Thank you so much, Dr. Purse. Thank you, Mayor, and to all the council members here, the department heads, everyone, for your collaboration. It truly is a regional effort. I was on the phone with Montgomery County just before this. We've been in very close contact with Fort Bend County, and we all recognize that this virus does not respect political boundaries. So we're working very, very closely together. I know that the anxiety in the community just continues to grow as we hear the news from uh, of spread in other areas of the country areas of the world and of course news that the rodeo will be canceled will only add to that and so i want to acknowledge the concern that we all feel given the um you know, the fact that we're still trying to understand this virus and and that ultimately it's a health issue and so first, of course, the rodeo will be canceled. They'll begin winding down starting today. And uh, as the mayor mentioned, we will be working together to assess what other steps need to be taken. Um, I will also be issuing later today a disaster declaration for Harris County. Um, Yesterday at Commissioner's Court, I directed and we directed all our departments to prioritize coronavirus preparedness over and above anything that is not an essential function. And we are working very hard with all of the hospitals, with businesses, with schools, as we have been to ensure that we not only have plans, but that we've exercised those plans, that we've identified weaknesses, um, and that we're preparing for whatever will happen or may happen with the virus. I do want to make clear for some time, and especially this weekend, it became very evident that we are facing limitations as to our testing capability. And I've, I've mentioned this somewhat. There are folks that we had to wait for state approval on for, for that test to be able to, to be sent to the city lab or to be sent to the lab in Atlanta. And so there are many more folks we could have 
tested, but because of the lack of tests we've received from the federal government, we've had very limited capabilities. Over the last couple of days, it's become clear that that may have uh, give us, in a sense, um, an, an undercount, if, if we want to put it that way, of what the community spread may have been. And so we were already working toward the step that we're taking today with the rodeo, and we were already working toward further steps. The positive case was identified in Montgomery County, but we know that that individual may have had contacts throughout Harris County. Uh, we know that it is only possible and very likely that there are other cases like that going on in Harris County. And so I want folks to know that we'll be working hard to continue to be proactive, uh, understanding that if we had the capability to test more people, we surely would be having more positives and perhaps more evidence of community transmission. And so at the county, we'll also be evaluating our county-sponsored events, but most importantly, hand-in-hand -hand with the mayor and other jurisdictions, what other steps we need to take right now. Very important for folks to recognize. We are not a hermetically sealed community. We can't do that. We are not an island nation. Uh, we can't close our borders. Uh, we can't do what some of these small countries have been able to do just here as a county or as a city or as a region. And so we have to recognize that it's possible that despite our containment efforts, it's possible, if not likely, that we will see wider spread of this virus. And so that's where what Dr. Peirce said is very important. This disease, 80% uh, of the people who get it have mild symptoms, like a mild flu. That 20% are the people who are going to need to be able to access our hospitals, the 20% that see themselves more affected, the, the, per, the small percentage that may be at risk of dying from this disease. And so we all have to begin putting into perspective right now what those statistics are. Because as much as we're working with the hospitals to ensure that they have the areas cordoned off, that they that we have the hotlines for folks to call who don't have health insurance, uh, the, the hotlines folks can call who are undocumented, ultimately we're all going to be have to continue to play our part not only on social distancing, not only on staying home if we're sick, not only on washing our hands and not coughing into our hands, but also in ensuring that we we're not, you know, flooding um, the hospitals or the doctors unnecessarily, those of us who know we are at low risk of being affected significantly by this virus. And so I want to make sure folks know we are working in coordination. Uh, the rodeo is being canceled. We are discussing any other options, any other steps we need to take right now. But containment will not be foolproof. It can't be, given the nature of our community. We are doing and will continue to do the best we can for that, but we are also very much focused on what our role is and will be in the event that this becomes more widespread, not just us, but everyone else in the community. I know a lot of folks had plans for the rodeo, perhaps for the for the tour, you know, for some of these events that are going to be, be affected, uh, but we all need to do our part. Uh, we need to stay informed, stay calm, and recognize that this is a community-wide response that we can't just do as government. Government. En español, repito. <coughs> Nos hemos reunido por el, el hecho del coronavirus. Eh, sé que hemos todos visto eh, pues la continuación de la comunicación de este virus en otras ciudades, en otros países. Eso causa mucha ansiedad. Definitivamente el anuncio de... You are listening de to Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, along with other officials, talking about the rodeo being canceled amid coronavirus concerns. We heard that the judge signed a disaster declaration for Harris County. Uh, coronavirus preparedness from this point forward will be top priority the county already working with hospitals. Uh, she also mentioned the lack of tests and there's concern with the lack of test kits because she believes there may be an undercount of exactly what's taking place out there with the coronavirus. Yeah, and before the judge began to speak, we were listening to Mayor Sylvester Turner speak as well. He announced that he is signing an emergency health declaration for the city of Houston that will remain in effect 
for seven days. And, and really what we are, the big news is that we now know for sure that the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is canceled. And as of 4 p.m. today, the rodeo tweeting out that as of 4 p.m. today, the grounds will be cleared and everything will be wrapped up and, and done um, as, as amid this news of, of the spread of the coronavirus. And really the, the move came um, once we learned about the presumptive positive case out of Montgomery County that was contracted within our community. All 13 other cases up until this point in and around our area had been contracted from international travel or a connection to a passenger from international travel. So that was what really became the game changer and why we are now seeing these moves being implemented in our city and in our county. Yeah, with that Montgomery County case that you're talking about, there is no travel history outside the state of Texas. So certainly officials concerned about the possibility of community spread. Uh, Mayor Sylvester Turner also taking things a step further during his statements, saying that all city produced and co-sponsored events will either be rescheduled or canceled for the month of March. That also includes uh, the tour to Houston, a very, very popular uh, ride for uh, the cycling community. Folks who like to get out on their bicycles and uh, take a tour of the city of Houston. It's an extremely popular uh, event that takes place in the month of March. That will either be rescheduled or canceled. Yeah, and, and right now basically saying through the month of March, none of these events will be happening as they they try to heed the warnings of, of health officials as the, the spread of the, the coronavirus continues to be a concern. Again, coronavirus, as we heard from health reporter Haley Hernandez, does not have a vaccine. That is the primary difference between the flu, the measles, and the coronavirus is that there are vaccines available for the other two, but the coronavirus is still in, in its infancy as it continues to spread across the globe. And that's why we're seeing city and county officials make the drastic moves that they are making. And the biggest today, of course, that we're focusing on is the cancellation of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We saw spectators um, out there going, hey, they just, they just stopped the rides with no explanation. Well, now we're getting an explanation and more answers as to how exactly this is going to look. And as of the end of today, later this afternoon, no other events are going to be happening. The, the concerts are canceled. Um, basically, as far as we know, nothing's going to be going on out at NRG. Yeah, and we also heard from Dr. David Purse this afternoon uh, talking about the 2% death rate among elderly adults with coronavirus and said basically, Look, these decisions aren't easy ones. They're extremely tough, and, and, and that sentiment was echoed by Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo as well as the mayor. But we are doing this to slow down the spread of the virus because the virus spreads so rapidly and can spread so rapidly that they believe this is the best way to slow down the spread of that virus. Yeah, Dr. David Purse said, we don't have any immunity to this. And as I mentioned, no vaccine. So really, if you were to contract this and you are healthy, you're likely going to be fine. That's something that we've heard from health officials. It's just those with underlying conditions or the elderly, if they were to contract this, that that can be uh, a more concerning situation. And it is our responsibility now as community members to make sure you're washing your hands and to try to stop help with the spread of this virus. Um, and we're again, thank, thank we're listening judge. to the city and uh, county leaders for, right now. Uh, Let's uh, listen here. back in. Um, I wanted to, uh, first of all, my name is Dr. Umer Shah. I'm the executive director of Harris County Public Health and the local health authority for Harris County. And I want to just add to what uh, the mayor and the judge have, have said, as well as Dr. Purse. Um, it is important to remember that we have been talking about novel coronavirus from a standpoint of both monitoring and response um, from the standpoint of if to when to now. And I think that is the important piece of this that is really about what's happening in our community. Uh, Dr. Purse has laid out all of the different uh, activities that the two health departments have been working on. Uh, Dr. Purse and I, uh, Stephen Williams, uh, the City of Houston Health Department Director, have been connected. And it's not just the two health departments being connected, but our regional public health partners have been connected over the last few months to really understand what has been happening globally what's been happening now domestically, and now what's happening here 
locally. So we know that these decisions and these activities that everybody has planned for are difficult decisions for us to make, but also for people in the community to, to partake in changing plans and making all those other aspects of what potentially could disrupt what their activities have been planned for or scheduled for. But we also recognize at the end of the day, the number one priority for all of us is to protect our community the health and well-being, the safety and security of our community. And that's why we have moved forward with this step. And I do want to say that they're absolutely important is that, that change with the Montgomery County uh, situation, that that has really been a significant change. We know there is a lot of evolving information here. And we also know that on a global uh, standpoint, the World Health Organization, WHO, just within the hour, uh, has now declared COVID-19 a pandemic. And so that really highlights how seriously entities, decision makers, and responders are taking COVID-19 across the globe. And I think it's very important for us to continue to emphasize what we've been emphasizing throughout, which is one, that we want people to take all the precautions that they can, especially, as the mayor mentioned, those who are elderly, those who have chronic health conditions. We want to make sure that you limit your interaction with, with those who may be sick or those who you are concerned about. We also want to make sure that if you are sick, that you don't go into settings, whether it's at work or sending your child to school, that you do not get other sick in our community. And when we say community, Judge Hidalgo and Mayor Turner absolutely are correct in that it is not just Houston, Harris County. It is our community at large, our entire region. We know people move around. We know people work in one place and live somewhere else. We want to make sure that you're taking all the precautions, not just for yourself and your family, but for your neighbors, for your elders nearby. For the people that are really most at risk, we want you to take all the precautions to help them stay healthy, safe, and protected. And finally, we're also saying make sure you remember all those personal hygiene and personal protective measures that we've been talking about, everything from uh, the, the, the assurance of hand washing and certainly using hand sanitizer when not, uh, uh, not able to, to use soap and water, which again, as a reminder, is the number one way to fight against a variety of respiratory conditions and infectious disease conditions is not hand sanitizer. It's actually soap and water. So I know there are a lot of concerns out there about the hand sanitizer, but soap and water. And then the other piece is certainly it cover, cover your cough, and there are a variety of uh, uh, both uh, information that we've been giving out there. And I think it's important for us to remember that it's not if and when, it's now. The final thing I want to say is that both health departments um, have set up hotlines uh, for information. There's information that's available at Harris County Public Health. There's information at the Houston Health Department. We've also stood up a uh, information line with our Harris Health Partner that's also information for clinical uh, questions that may be coming up from, from the public. So between those or amongst those three local resources, we're also pushing everything we can to, to assure that information is out there through our websites. You can go to readyharris.org as well as the, the uh, websites for the city and the county as well as obviously the state and, the, and other federal partners. It is absolutely important that we give ourselves all of the information so we can make good decisions for ourselves and our family. Thank you. Joel Conley, President of Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Joel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First and foremost, I want to thank the city and the county uh, for their professionalism over the past week. And I also want to recognize Dr. Kelly Larkin, one of our volunteer vice presidents, for her efforts in making sure that we took every possible precaution on the grounds during the first week of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. So we have been in constant communication with the city and county health departments over the past week and really operating under their guidance. With the evidence of community spread, obviously things have changed, and we will respectfully and dutifully comply 
with the order to cease our operations. As heartbreaking as this is for our millions of fans, our 35,000 volunteers, our staff, our exhibitors, and our contestants, it is the right thing to do in the interest of the health and well-being of the community. And so we have implemented uh, procedures to do a an orderly wind down of our operations. Uh, there, as the, the mayor inter, uh, earlier stated, there will be no rodeo and no concert this evening, nor for the remainder of the show. We do have some livestock and some horse shows going on, and we will wind those down today as well. With regard to those who are on our grounds presently, uh, we are requiring that they depart the grounds by 4 p.m. And for those who are holding pre-purchased items, whether those be tickets or whether those be carnival packs, we will be posting refund information on our website. So please be patient with us as we get that information out. Uh, one of the other questions that I've received is, uh, does this mean we will not be giving scholarships? And I am happy to tell you that due to the foresight of our executive committee, we are in a position to fulfill our annual contribution and commitment to youth and education. And so we thank uh, the city and the county for their support in this. Uh, as hard as this is to do, it is the right thing to do, and we definitely thank the community for the support of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo as well. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. I do want to recognize Jay Carrero with Senator Cornyn's uh, office as well. Thank you, Jay, for being here. Uh, and let me just say um, in, in closing, uh, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo uh, has been and continues to be an incredible, an incredible partner and asset uh, to our region. Uh, it goes far beyond Houston, Harris County, Fort Bend, Montgomery, uh, Montgomery County, you name it, an incredible asset and uh, um, resource. Uh, and so let me, again, let me thank the Houston Livestock Stock Show and Rodeo, and they took uh, just uh, uh, additional steps uh, to prepare uh, to keep everyone safe, and so that's very much, very much appreciated. Let me also uh, say what does um, an emergency uh, health declaration mean? So when it comes to, uh, it will give us greater um, uh, abilities to manage our resources, um, flexibility with the procurement process, uh, in acquiring assets, uh, and hopefully in, in, in um, getting federal assistance as well. And that's the, that's the, those are the primary reasons for the emergency health declaration. I want that to be clear because I don't want everybody to think that we need to get in a panic situation. So let me just tell you why we, why we are doing it. From, uh, from a contractual point of view, procurement point of view, managing resources, getting federal assistance, uh, those things are important. And so that's the purpose, that's the reason why we are um, uh, putting forth this emergency health declaration, both the city and the county, by the end of the day. Another thing that I want to bear in mind is that we're working collaboratively. And so uh, the month of March, uh, let me speak from the city of Spanish point, from the month of March, we have school districts that are already out on spring break like right now. We have uh, big school districts like Houston Independent School Districts that I think will be out on spring break like next week. Okay, And you have University of Houston, I believe that's out right now. Rice is out uh, this week as well as next week. So they're out right now. And so by um, 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 canceling or rescheduling a lot of these activities right now in the month of, month of March, it kind of helps to contain and mitigate. Uh, because now with the rodeo not taking place right now in this time period, with Tour de Houston not taking place, uh, with the city, for example, uh, uh, rescheduling and canceling in the events right here in the month of March, the goal is to do everything that we can uh, within reason to contain and mitigate. That's, that's the goal right here in the month of March. And so um, even though there are only two confirmed cases in the city of Houston, we are regional, and people travel from one part to the other. And we are totally incorporated within Harris County, and Harris County covers a large area. And people in Montgomery, Fort Bend, we all go back and forth. And so the goal is if we can significantly slow things down. Uh, and for people to, uh, uh, while we assess what's out there, because we really don't know what's out there, 
uh, but it does provide for free people who are traveling internationally. For example, if they're coming back, 14 days self-quarantine. That's what we're saying. We're saying that people stay away if you travel internationally uh, from nursing homes or senior living facilities. We're saying that. For those who are elderly with underlying medical conditions, we're saying stay away from large crowds. And so those messages we continue to say. Uh, but again, I do want to emphasize this is not a time for people to panic, okay, or be fearful, you know. Yes, you can go to the store and buy the soap and buy the, buy the sanitizer. And quite frankly, as I've said before, I never go home without it, you know, leave home without it. You can do that. But purchasing the toilet paper, I don't get that one. <laughs> that one I don't get. So let me just say, we said we will make decisions based on the facts, the science, and the medical advice. No medical physician, doctor, anyone has said anything about, for example, the toilet paper. Okay, so I just want—I want to say that I want to say that, and then I want people to understand the decisions that we have made for today, even as it relates to the Houston Livestock and Show Rodeo, was not just made in a vacuum by the county judge or the county or the city. We have had these conversations with the Texas Medical Center. We've had these conversations with almost all the CEOs, the hospitals in the Texas Medical Center. And I can rightfully say to you, we are all on the same page. Because the number one concern is to do everything we can to maintain the health and safety of the people in our region. And we said we would watch this situation very, very carefully. And as the facts change, our strategies would have to change to correspond to those facts. And the situation is still fluid. But the goal in the city of Houston and in the county and in the, re in, in the surrounding region is to recognize when conditions change and then to do everything we can to be proactive, to contain, and to mitigate. And if we do that collectively, if we do that collectively, then we will come out of this situation and we'll move forward, okay? So with city of Houston employees, I still expect for you to show up tomorrow, and I still expect for you to work the entire day. In fact, I expect you to work the entire day today, okay? So we're going to continue to go about our business. We're just going to do it in a very smart way, and that's the goal. Having said that, we'll take any questions that anyone may have. Mayor and Joe, uh, can you address the fact that uh, Michael just told me that this individual in the Miller County uh, attended the rodeo, and that is part of the reason why you guys took such immediate action today? that he was actually there for certain days. Dr. Percy, you want to take that? The action that's being taken is because of uh, community spread. And as the mayor pointed out, and as we all know, we move all over the, the community. And so the, this individual uh, became infected. We don't know how, which means there is likely another person in the community. And so we suspect that this is you know, potentially a tip of an iceberg. And there may be many people throughout the community who are infected. So that's why we're taking these steps uh, at this point. And as the mayor pointed out, it's really, it's, this is an issue of large gatherings that we're talking about. So the, uh, the bike tour and other large gatherings, all the things that the city, um, uh, as he pointed out, are sponsored, permitted, I can't remember what the exact phrase was, but those are all being, because this is a, we know that the virus is no longer when it was related to that Egyptian cruise, we knew who those folks were, we knew who their close contacts were, and we felt we had it contained at that point. But we all knew that it was probably a matter of time before there, this was going to happen. So now that we, this has happened and we have community spread, uh, this isn't about the rodeo, this is about large gatherings uh, and protecting the, the community. I understand, but if he was at the rodeo at a specific barbecue tent mm -hmm. or at a specific incident, wouldn't those people who attended the ticket for those tents, who were security, who are volunteers want to know, and are you letting those people know? So, that yeah. Not being asked. And so, especially if he went to a concert, a specific concert. He was not. No, no, well, okay. Let's be, yeah, because one, I hear your, your question, let me be straightforward. There is some indication that he was at the barbecue cook off. Right, he was at the barbecue put cook off, and then we are tracing to specifically find out where he was, okay? But not at the concert. He didn't attend any of the concerts and anything of that nature. But uh, there is information that he uh, worked or was at the barbecue cook off, and then we are trying to trace back. Was he a volunteer or 
that I'm trying to get information so, on. So one thing to add, and I appreciate that question, is obviously the, the teams, the epidemiological teams, have to go and do their investigation. And so they're still honing in on exactly the contacts of this individual. Obviously, people's recollection is murky. If we thought about what we did a week ago is hard. And so they're trying to trace this, this, this gentleman's steps. And based on that, we'll put out additional guidance if we get something concrete. Our best understanding right now is he was at the barbecue cook-off on the 28th. And it's still, they're still trying to suss out whether he had symptoms then, which would have made it a bigger issue, or whether he didn't have symptoms, which wouldn't have made it as big an issue. And so that's why right now we're asking everybody, if you're feeling sick, with, with um, symptoms that could be related to coronavirus, please don't go to work, don't go to school. If anyone has unexplained you know, symptoms and have a sense that they may have this, they can contact your healthcare provider, don't show up, because if you do have it, you're gonna, you're gonna in, end up you know, passing it on to everybody else, call. Call your doctor. If you don't have a doctor, call our, our health lines. The city has one, the county has one. We're working with the state to try to have the same number. They're not there yet, so we're doing it right now. We have to have our separate lines, but we're cross-referencing to one another. Uh, Fort Bend has one too. And no matter if you have insurance, if you're undocumented, you can call our line if you think that you may have this. And so... Uh, but, 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 Maya, to answer your question, the decision was made because of community spread, and it's already something that we were thinking about given the undercount uh, or, or the lack of testing capability. En español, sí, espérese la red. Sí, entonces ten, en este momento todavía estamos estudiando bien cuáles fueron los contactos de esta persona, de este señor. Y... You are listening to Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner, and local health officials updating us on the situation, um, the coronavirus, and the big announcement coming out of this, that the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is shutting down because... There is now evidence of community spread of the coronavirus. We've also learned, according to the mayor, there is evidence and information that the 40-year-old man from Montgomery County who is presumptive positive for the coronavirus attended the barbecue cook-off on February 28th, and they're now in the process of trying to trace back um, where else he'd been because what they're t uh, what they're saying is there's no evidence that he had traveled outside the state of Texas. And that is what the mayor was saying is is the game changer in this announcement because we were asking, hey, why now? Why is the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo being canceled right now, now more than a week in? And that was the game changer was that before we found out about this presumptive positive Mon case out of Montgomery County with this 40-year-old man, he had not traveled out of the state of Texas recently. All the other... Uh, positive cases of coronavirus in our area. The 13 others were contracted from international travel or a connection to that. All right, let's listen back uh, in. That I cannot speak to. Uh, you know, I can't speak to that uh, at this time. What I will indicate to you with respect to city sponsored and co-sponsored and permitting and uh, events controlled by the city for the, March of Mar for the month of March, we are canceling those. We'll continue to work with uh, all of the other stakeholders in the city. At this point, we are continuing to assess our situation, but what I can definitively tell you with respect to city-sponsored, permitted, and controlled events, those events are being rescheduled or canceled for the month of March, and then we'll continue to work with the other partners and the other stakeholders in the city. HIC is in class until Friday, 200,000 kids or families. Uh, what, what is your, and the district has not told us much, they have a couple of teachers in quarantine, so I want to We'll certainly leave it up to them, but if they want to continue out the rest of the week and then they'll be on spring break next week, I think that would be consistent. If I might add, Mayor, so the, with all of the school districts, the communication has very much been, and we're talking to all of them. 
if you see a child who is sick, make sure that they're not there. And so that's been a continuous communication. We've been asking them to plan for, you know, what it would look like to continue operations or what, what would happen if this becomes more widespread. As we discussed earlier, you know, we will be talking more later today, given these developments. Obviously, I was at Commissioner's Court all day yesterday. Mayor was at Council all morning. And so we're going to talk about every other steps that we can take and should take and we'll be making additional recommendations based on that but right now we just got news of this uh, community spread we've just now seen our testing capability limitations and we're taking the steps as quickly as we can we wanted to make sure and get this out today so the rodeo could shut down today and we don't have any more events later tonight and and we are having those conversations and we will be making additional recommendations as appropriate um, but let us have today to discuss that further. Yesterday, mm. Harris County Health announced a fifth case of presumptive positive, and the press release did include flight information for this woman. Why have you not yet released flight information for the several cases connected to the Egypt River in the United States? So we released the flight information for a woman who traveled from Italy. Yes, or from Italy that we received that information, the the, the positive case yesterday. Um, we have evidence that she had symptoms on the plane, and even though we haven't received the flight manifest from the CDC, we wanted to make sure and inform the community just as we did with the church. Uh, with the other flights, the health authorities all spoke, and at the state level, uh, the national level, the city or the county, everybody's in agreement that there were not symptoms at, in the, at that point and so that's the decision that the health authorities have made um, we're of course checking on all of the known contacts that those folks have had and so far we've not received any positives i'll invite dr shaw also to share his perspective on that yep. sure Thank you, Judge, and thanks for that question. So uh, it was it was a, a difficult decision because we recognize as we um, get information out there, what uh, naturally people start to do is say, oh, I was on a flight. Oh, I was on a, any flight. And then all of a sudden you start to, to add in information. So as the judge mentioned, um, the, one, there was symptoms before the flight. Um, or during the flight, I should say. But in addition to that, we were uh, being told that it was going to be some time before we were going to be able, able to see the manifest. And that delay in being able to get the manifest made us trigger to, as the judge mentioned, to the next level, which was the best way to get this information out in order to at least understand who else may have been. And remember, there were, uh, th this individual's in first or business class on two flights from Florence to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Houston on March 3rd, we thought it was important to get that information out, out of really the, the hope to be able to identify other individuals that may have been in those classes. Now, it's very possible we're going to get that manifest today, tomorrow. But we were told that it was going to be several days, and we did not want to wait to be able to inform the public. And I think that's the most important thing. Now, as far as uh, you mentioned about other flights, it's absolutely what the judge said, that symptoms, but it's also a whole host of other uh, activities that our epidemiologists are involved in. Sometimes it means that we can have a very targeted, focused way of identifying the in individuals, and that's what our epidemiologists on both health departments, our regional health departments, are very good at doing. In fact, they do it much better than the physicians. Uh, our epidemiologists are very strong at this. However, when they determine that they cannot identify, then that's the point when we may go uh, further with a message to the community. Mayor, Judge, is there any regret that these containment strategies weren't uh, initiated earlier? I know that you alluded to the fact that the testing difficulties, that there was probably other cases out there. Should these actions have been taken before? I have, let me just answer. I have no regrets because we are based in decision based on the science and the medical advice uh, and the facts that are presented. And let's bear in mind, this is a new phenomena. We're in new territory. And everyone is making the best judgments around the globe to try to do, take the necessary steps to keep people safe, to protect everyone, and then at the same time recognizing that people still have to work, they still have to take care of their families and their kids, and they still have to pay the mortgage and the rent and the electricity bills. And so up to the point of yesterday, 
all of the confirmed cases in Fort Bend, Harris County, and Houston were directly tied to international travel. And with the exception of the Italy example, they were all connected directly to the Egyptian cruise liner. And then please bear in mind as it relates to the city of Houston, there are only two confirmed cases in the city of Houston. I cannot say that enough. Now that's not to say that there's not community spread. And we are taking steps, regardless of whether community spread was detected in Houston or Harris County or Montgomery uh, County, we are taking steps to contain and mitigate. Okay? And so that's, that's what we're doing. With respect to Sarah Week, which attracted, which would have attracted thousands of people from 80 different countries, that event was canceled. There are other conferences that have already been rescheduled for later on in the year. So the definitive steps already have already taken place. Uh, Myra, with respect to the schools, I think what people need to bear in mind, the vulnerable population are seniors with underlying medical conditions. For whatever reason, kids seem to be dealing with this much, 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 much better. So the vulnerable population are seniors with underlying medical conditions. But let's, let's, let's bear in mind, this is, we are in new territory across the globe, across the country, and we're all taking the uh, reasonable, necessary steps based on the science, based on medical advice uh, that's being, being presented to us. So, no. Uh, Can Dr. Hurst or Dr. Shaw talk about, you know, we have the big medical center, like, is there a capacity with our, our beds and our so I'll start first because I was closer to the microphone, although I would, <laughs> was hoping that Dr. Purse would be able to answer this. Uh, <laughs> you know, in, in, a, in, a, in all seriousness, I mean, Dr. Purse and I, I, I cannot uh, thank him enough for his uh, collegiality and partnership. And you all have seen us working around the clock together. And I think it's just a reflection of City of Houston, Mr. Williams' health department, as well as the county health department. All of our team members, our regional health departments, are just really incredibly, um, we're just fortunate in this region to have strong health departments. I just, I, I should really say that. What, what I, I do want to say is that we have equally recognized that it's very important that we're working with our health care providers and our health care systems. And so uh, we have been getting messages out. Uh, as you know, that our uh, Harris County Public Health operates the regional hand, the health alert network. Uh, we have sent over a dozen messages out to health care institutions and entities and, and health care providers to get updated guidance to them. The, the challenge that we've had, and this has really been a, a global challenge, that this really goes in phases. And we are hoping that we can, as Dr. Purse mentioned earlier, delay or bend the curve so that surge is not required within the healthcare entities across our system, not just in Texas Medical, Medical Center, but throughout our region and throughout the state and beyond. So what we have been doing is working with those institutions to say, first, plan for surge. Plan for all the different activities that are going to be required, potentially, if we got to a point of having additional needs. But we also recognize, and this is not a local phenomenon, this is a national phenomenon, that we simply do not have enough capacity if we were to see a large surge, again, if we were to see a large surge that happens all at one time, not over time, but all at one time. So it's absolutely critical for us to really work with those hospitals, healthcare entities, ICU beds, hospital beds in general, alternate care site strategies, how are they protecting their health care workers, personal protective equipment, how do they assure the, the uh, supply chain, all the different communications messages to their own teams but also beyond, and really testing and all the other activities that really go along with it. We recognize the incredible strength of our health care partners, and we're certainly working with them. And Dr. Purse, I know, has some additional information. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. 
And I want to point out, this is a great question. It really kind of goes to the crux of what I worry about. And so we have been working closely with the health systems. Uh, Bill McKeon from the Texas Medical Center has had several meetings. The mayor has uh, actually basically chaired uh, one of those meetings with us. And we've been talking with all the big hospital systems and some of the uh, independent hospitals that are there are large hospitals. We are talking about. And we have been talking about surge capacity for patients who require hospitalization. We've been talking about surge capacity for the emergency department, and we've been talking about surge capacity for laboratory testing. And so I want to remind everyone that this is Houston, and unfortunately we have weather events that stress our community, not the least of which is the healthcare community. And I would remind you of 2001 with Tropical Storm Allison. We lost five hospitals within three hours on a Friday night. I, for one, will never forget that. Four of those hospitals were four of the largest in the city, and they were offline for months before they came back online. And we were able to figure it out and, uh, and surge at that point. Now, Tropical Storm Allison, we had no warning, and we were able to do it. So now we have a warning. We've been coordinating with the health systems, with the hospitals. Uh, plans are in place. And, you know, hopefully we won't have to go there. Again, I'll direct you to our, our chart over on the side. As Dr. Shaw, Shaw uh, pointed out, our whole goal with all these strategies is to slow down the spread of the virus throughout the community, hopefully minimize how many people become infected. But even if we are unfortunately able to fail at that, if we can spread it over a longer period of time, then the healthcare community will be able to take care of those patients. There'll be an ICU bed available for the person who needs it. There'll be a regular hospital bed available for the person who needs it. There'll be testing available for the people who need to be tested. And one th last thing I'd say before I step away from the podium is with, with testing, we are increasing our ability to test. Uh, we're working with the hospitals, we're working with the commercial industry test, laboratory testing industry, and that capacity is growing. But an important thing for people to understand is if you are not having symptoms, you do not need to be tested. And this is important to understand. If somebody, when you get infected with a virus, you know, the virus comes into your body and it starts replicating itself. And it starts, the amount of virus starts to slowly grow until the point where you start having symptoms. And then depending on, you know, all these factors of how healthy you are, your underlying medical problems, your age, so on and so forth, determines really about how sick you will get. But if you're feeling well, even if you have the virus in you, if you're feeling well and we test you, that test is likely going to come back negative. So all that we've done at that point is wasted a test. So the testing for people who are without symptoms but are simply scared, and I understand that people can be very scared, but if you're not having symptoms, the test does you no good. It, it may, if you were, were to get tested, and we're advocating that people who are without symptoms do not get tested, but if you did get tested and it came back and it was negative, that may not be accurate. You may, need to, you may have tested two days early. If you, two, three days later, you start having fever and difficulty breathing, and get tested then it would come back positive but getting tested before you have symptoms doesn't give you should not give you any reassurance so people should not ask for that pay attention to your symptoms when you get symptoms contact your health care provider and here's another important part if you have symptoms and you think that you're infected please call ahead because our health care workers are a vital asset in our community we've already seen at you know some of our hospitals how some of our health care workers became exposed to cases and then they had a quarantine well we can't afford to be losing doctors and nurses to quarantine when had somebody called ahead and say hey i'm coming in this is what i think i have they then properly met you at the door and escorted you in and took care of you and the healthcare workers didn't get uh, um, uh, exposed and they could have kept at work so every time we somebody just shows up and thinks I have it, when it turns out that they did, we, you know, th those healthcare workers are exposed and then they gotta go home from work. And that, we can't afford that. So please work with us. Again, we've been through this before when the community does their part and government does its part. We've gotten through this before. We'll get through it again. Thank you. And lastly, let me just say collaboratively on that note, uh, the city and the healthcare community, we've been, we've been working together. And the county. Yeah. And the, I'm sorry. And, and, <laughs> We're and all in this well, yeah. together. But yeah. The, point, yeah, the point that I, that I wanted to make is that what is important for our healthcare community is PPEs, personal protection equipment. And that's what we're needing. That's what we're needing from the CDC is personal protection equipment, PPEs. And over this weekend, for example, when the call was, came in uh, to, to, uh, to me, uh, from the medical center about when we're getting ready to stand up, for example, alternative testing sites, the need for PPEs. The city's been planning for six situations, as well as the county, over years, and we did an inventory of our own equipment that we have. 
and on Saturday at 3 at 3 p.m., we sent over to the medical center uh, 10,000 uh, N95 masks to the medical center. So we're all working collaboratively. The county is, is inventorying its assets and sharing assets as well. And so uh, all the different units are working uh, together. Uh, let me thank, Judge, thank you for being here. Dr. Sharp, representatives from the county. Uh, Joel, thank you. Doctor, thank you. From the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, all the city council members, department heads. And, um, you know, we're going to keep working, and uh, this too shall pass. Thank you very much.